get going. Uh, this video is by request. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this pool at the end, uh, so make sure you stick around for that. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do a new file, and I'm going to use the architectural template. Of course, if you are starting Revit, you can choose the icon in the middle of the screen um, that says architectural template. There's a couple ways to get to it. All right. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so basically I have uh, a basic floor plan right here. Um, the first thing that I usually want to do is go to my elevations. And so I can see I have uh, level one, level two, uh, ceiling plans, uh, and then elevations. It doesn't matter which one I choose. I'll go ahead and choose east. I'll double click on it and it'll open up a separate window here. So I can see that my level two is 10 feet and my level one is zero feet and I'm gonna say I'm gonna go ahead and just change that okay there you go so I'm gonna do 12 feet push enter there you go now my level 2 is 12 feet all right now if I go to I can go ahead and close this view uh, my screen resolution is real high so it could be kind of hard to see some of this but in the upper right of that you're gonna see that now I'm using Revit 2017 uh, whatever version you're using should be similar, shouldn't be too much different. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, move this around here, uh, and then I'm just going to make a very, very basic, uh, say like a shed, if you will. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is place some walls. I find that that's one of the easiest ways to do it. And so I'll just click wall, and I'm going to use the uh, basic wall. Of course, you have a lot of other things. But you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to use the generic four inch brick. I think that might look kind of cool. Uh, you can see under the uh, drawing tools right now, I'm on the line tool. I know I'm going to make a rectangle, so I'm going to choose the rectangle, click once and let go, and then drag. And let's say my shed, I'll make it like 20 feet by, say 20 feet. Nah, I want a rectangular shed. How about 18 by 26? Yeah, so how about 18 by 26? Now, let's say that I was zoomed way out. It's going to be real hard to get that 18 by 26. And if I'm zoomed way in, it's going to be hard to see those figures. Uh, or if I'm moving it around, it might be hard to get it exactly what I want. So it's, I'm just going to draw the basic rectangle. I'm going to push escape a couple times. Then I'm going to select the wall. And I think I said I wanted it like 18, so I'll just put in 18 and push enter. I'm going to select this wall, and I said like what, 26, push enter. So now I have an 18 by 26. It's at this point I like to kind of see what's going on, so I will click that little button right there. All right, so uh, I want to have uh, myself a second view here. So under the view tab, I'm going to select 3D view. All right, and there's my 3D view. Wow, that looks very strange. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it so I can see kind of split screen, rearrange it, maybe zoom in a little bit. Okay, I got my brick, so that's kind of cool. I like to see it in a uh, more of a realistic view, so there's a little button down here in the window that says uh, wireframe, hidden frame, realistic. I'm going to select realistic. Ooh, that looks that looks very strange. All right, so I'll select the wall over here on the floor plan uh, view, and you can see that it's highlighted in both of the windows. And if you see over here under the constraints, I have unconnected height of 20 feet. And so that's why it looks so weird. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all four walls. And since there's only walls selected, I can adjust the properties of the, them as walls. If I had a floor underneath or objects and I highlighted everything, I wouldn't be able to, to do all this at the same time. I'd have to select just walls. So where it says unconnected, I'm going to change that connected to level 2. Now we should see that wall, yep, go exactly to 12 feet high. Um, because we set our elevation at 12 feet. If I were to go back to the beginning of the video and change the elevation to, say, 18 feet, those walls would automatically raise with the, the change of the uh, floor height. Uh, and by that, I mean the, the story, you know, story one's height or uh, where level two starts. All right, so 
At this point, I have uh, my basic uh, shape of my shed. Uh, I want to go ahead and put a window in. So I'll go to uh, Architecture and then select Window. Uh, now, if you'll notice when you hover over, it says WN. I really like uh, keyboard shortcuts. So if you're working, all you have to do is push the W key and then the N key. Just push one and then let go and then push the next and let go. So WN and I'll automatically be in the window tool. And so I have a fixed window of 36 by 48. You can choose a different window. I'm gonna choose a bigger window. And let's see, let me put it right, say right here. And you can see it's nine feet on each side, so it's centered right there. And there we go, I've placed my window. Now, eh, it looks like it might be a little strange. So let's push escape a couple times to get out of the window drawing tool. I'm gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna kinda I'll hold shift and then right click and drag this around, kinda see. Sometimes it's gonna go faster if you change it instead of realistic to say like uh, shaded or con consistent colors. And so here, let me just, uh, uh, if you get lost, you can just click the little home button right here. Uh, there we go. All right, let's try this again. Okay, so the inside and outside, I can't really tell if I got the sill in the right spot by looking at this view. Uh, it looks like I did. Yeah, see how the there's it's bigger on that side? Um, that should be the sill. And it should also be, you should also be able to see it right here on this side. You can see that the bigger side is there. Um, that's the sill, we want that on the inside. But it does look kind of weird to have the window that low. Um, so you know, you can select the window here or you can select it here. Uh, I usually select things in the uh, floor plan view that's over here. Uh, when you select things in the 3D view, you can end up having some, some weird issues. Um, so it looks like over here under constraints, I, I have a sill height of one foot. Um, I'm going to change the sill height of this to uh, say two and a half feet. So say two feet six inches and press enter. And applied it did and there we go that looks a lot more normal um, I don't know I think uh, one window is kind of it's kind of bare let me do I'm gonna do two windows so what I'll do is I'll select that window I'm gonna do control C control V and then just drag right there and then maybe control V again and then like drag right there. There, I got three windows. Cool. All right, those are nice windows. Oops. All right, so yeah, I like that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my doors. Uh, now, my, this is my pool shed. Um, and so my pool is gonna be, I think my pool is gonna be on this side right here. So I'm gonna put in those doors uh, right here. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little so I can see it. Now I want some big doors, so hopefully they have some doors. The keyboard shortcut for doors is DR. So I'm put DR. And then I'll have my door. There you go, single flush. I'm not really going to uh, worry too much about the, the type of door. Um, I just want to get the biggest door. So 36 by 48, that looks like the biggest door. Uh, single flush, these doors are probably not really exterior doors. Um, but, you know. For the, the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and, and use them. Uh, yeah, let's put one here, and then I'm going to push space bar to change the swing of it and put it here. And you can see that doors, th these doors are not really made to be double doors. Um, so in the, in the realistic view of it, on the floor plan it looks fine. But on the realistic view down here, or over here in the 3D view, it looks strange. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, the doors... Uh, you know they're real they're real objects that would be used in architecture so um, generally you're going to want to find the right object um, but your uh, your teacher or I can uh, can go through that more uh, in another video uh, for you uh, and you know what it looks like it would be nice to have another window right there when you control C control V and put that window like say right there yeah, I like that. Maybe another one over here. Right here. 
Uh, how about that? Yeah, okay. So the symmetry of my building is probably not the best, but like I said, I'm, I'm not really trying uh, to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I would probably spend more time making sure that those doors are actually in the center, making sure the windows are actually lined up right. And for all of those OCD people out there right now, it's probably killing you that I'm not going to fix it. Uh, I'm going to leave it that way. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I need to get a floor. Uh, and really, if I were going to do any objects in here, I might do some shelves. Maybe just do some shelves real quick. So I'll go to Component. Uh, and then in the drop down, I probably don't have any shelves in here. I got a parking space. That's funny. Uh, I got some trees. Yeah, let's throw in a let's throw in a tree or two. Let me throw in a a tree like yeah, you know, my pool is gonna go there, so I don't know if I want. It's gonna have to. I'm gonna have to clean that pool a little bit more. And put a giant tree right there, and maybe like another giant tree right here. There we go. I push escape a couple times. Oh, I want to go back to component. Uh, now instead of a tree, we wanted some furniture or something, didn't we? All right, let's say Japanese. No, these are all trees. Okay. All right. Well, so I'm gonna have to click. Um, I'll just click on edit right here where it says edit type. I think this is the fastest way to load an additional thing. Click load right there, and then find something. I think maybe under furniture. Yeah, storage. I got these cabinets, uh, desks, drawers, entertainment, yep, shelving, I like shelving, let's do shelving, okay, okay, there we go, and looks like, do we have any other kinds of shelving, yes, we got a 96 by 12 by 84, that's a nice big one, alright, so I'm going to push space bar again, alright, there we go, we got some shelves in there, sweet. All right, cool. Oh, I just realized it looks like my tree is getting in my building. What the heck? What's what's wrong with you, tree? Oh no! My trees are growing into my. Oh, oh can't have that. Oh, stupid trees! All right, here, get over there. Get out of my building, tree. All right, dumb tree, move. All right, are they out of my building now? Yeah, kind of. Maybe if they grow a little, oh, that one's still kind of in there. It's kind of weird how the circle here doesn't really represent, I think the circle there represents the uh, planted area. Oh, anyway. Yeah. I bet those will look better in the realistic view. We'll do that. Anyway, uh, I want to have uh, some open space in my in my pool shed. It's a big shed, but uh, I, you know maybe I'll put like a, a pool table in there. Maybe this won't actually be much of a shed anyway. Maybe it'll be more of a like a rec room or something. Maybe I'll put a bathroom in there or something. I could get really creative uh, and really get caught up spending a lot of time doing this, but I said I wasn't going to spend too much time. So let's get back to doing the floor. Uh, click on floor. And now you're in the Modify or Create Floor Boundary tool. Uh, this floor I want to cover, it's a rectangle, so that's going to be pretty easy. Uh, I can select the Rectangle tool or I can select the, the Line tool. And when I have Boundary Line selected, it's going to use these boundaries as, as where, where you can snap to. All right. So you can see, and if I zoom in maybe a little bit, you can see when I hold it there, there's that little pink, that little pink square. When that little pink square get it, it shows up there, that's what you want. Okay, I want the floor, this floor, to go underneath the walls. So I'm just on a generic 12-inch floor. I'm gonna click, and then if I'm good, then I click the check mark, and then my floor appears. Done. Okay, now my shit has a floor. Yay! All right, let's see here. Yeah, nothing much. Oh well. All right, that's pretty much uh, how you do that. Let's go ahead and put a roof on our on our little shed. Okay, so we're gonna go to the roof tool. You click the roof tool. Now this is a very important part. If you say select level one, you're basically putting the roof on the floor. Okay, because level one is 
the, the bottom of level one is where the flooring is. Let me show you that. Oh, let's, uh, let's escape or push that red X. Let's pull up an elevation view again. I'm just going to click on east, double click on east, and we're going to get an elevation view. We should be able to see those trees and how high they are. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Nice little elevation view. Elevation. Nice. Okay. Now you'll notice level one. You see how level one is, the floor is under level one? Because we want level one. We want where your foot is going to step. Level one, where you're going to walk in at the door, that is going to be the, um, the, the, where, the where level one actually is. Okay? So the flooring goes below level one. Now level two, we want the roof to sit on top of level two. Right, so that can be kind of confusing, but we really we want the the roof to be on on that level two spot right there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that thing open in the background. I'm going to zoom out because the magic moment when you place that roof is always cool. So I'm going to keep this 3D view visible right there. All right, so I'm going to go back to the floor plan view, and I'm going to go to the roof tool. I'm going to select level two and then click yes I'm gonna use those boundary tools again just like I drew the floor now if you have a different shape house that's alright you can use the line tool here and you just click like with the line tool you would just click there to there you know and if it went out somewhere weird out here um, then that's fine you just click 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 it's gotta be a bounded box though or polygon. Um, it doesn't have to be a square or a rectangle, but it does need to be a polygon where you have these points and they ha it has to be a closed polygon. So it has you have to go back to the you have to you have to get all the way back to the original point eventually. I'll click there. Now I have a bounded polygon, right? And then I'll click the green check mark, and there you go. My basic roof is there. And I can click somewhere else, and ta-da, I've got a basic roof. Okay, there you go. Now, you can change some of the stuff with the roof. Um, like, for instance, if you select it, ah, there we go. There's this little tool here. You can change the pitch. Like, I don't need a real steep pitch on my roof here. You know, that's, that's going to be good enough. I'm not, I'm not going to be anywhere where there's snow, not with an outdoor pool like this. All right, so I'm going to do a real shallow pitch like that. So let me change it to realistic. My computer might chug a little bit here. Ah, there, there we go. Look at those trees. Wow, look at that. That is nice. Look at that. Woo, got some trees there. Got my shelves in there. That's made out of, out of brick. Look at my asphalt uh, roof. Okay, I don't do roofs very often, to be honest with you. I use, uh, really, for the floor plan tool, I don't usually really uh, do roofs very much, but uh, I, if I was doing this for real and I really wanted to make it look nice, I would put an overhang so that the roof overhung that uh, building. But, yeah, it's a brick building, so, yeah, it probably doesn't matter. Look at that pretty thing. All right, I promised a pool. Let's do a pool. All right, let's do a pool. All right, I don't know if I leave it on realistic, if it's going to hang the computer up. I better change it. All right, I'm going to change it back to consistent colors. It makes it easier for the computer to do stuff. All right, so I want my pool to be right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, this will be actually a good practice for how to use the bounding tool. I got a little secret for you. Uh, this might upset you. Uh, there is no pool as a preset in Revit. I'm sorry. But there are these really cool, there's a really cool website. Okay. The really cool website is, um, let's see here. It's called RevitCity.com. R-E-V-I-T-C-I-T-Y dot com. You'll need to create an account. Uh, and and the, the, the emails, like they said, we sent you an email to verify your email. They take a while. 
Um, there's 1.4 million users on this, and I don't think they're like a giant company. Um, so sometimes it can be a little slow, but I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i go ahead and log in. Don't steal my login information. All right. All right, I'm logged in. And then you can use this little search tool. Where is it? Search. And I'll type swimming pool. All right. And there you go. You got some different swimming pool options. All right. They usually work for most versions of Revit. Um, but you kind of want to take a look at them. Like, that's a pretty cool pool. And then you download it. And then that file, when you go to Revit, you would say, uh, for instance, I would go to an object. Let me see. I'll go to uh, component. And then you would click edit type and then load. And you'll find your download uh, on your computer, right? So I'd go to like my computer, it'd probably be in downloads. And that's it right there. Swimming pool, just one link. That's the one I got. All right, but I actually already did that one. Let's do it anyway. Click open. Probably, it was probably like, hey, dude, you already downloaded this. So I'll click OK. Hey, I got a swimming pool. <gasps> Look at that. It's a good size already, but it said you could adjust it. So I like that. I'm just going to keep it that size. 24. Boom. Click. I'll push escape a couple times. Now it looks weird over here. Right, we'll fix that in a second. Now I'm just going to use a floor for my from like my deck. So I'm going to go back to floor. Where are you, floor? Floor. All right. And this is where it's going to be good to at uh, drawing the boundary lines. Okay. Because if I go here and then here, I want to zoom in. I want to go to here like that. Uh, why are you doing this to me? Push escape. Maybe drag it there. Yeah. Oh, you know what? It's fine. Uh, you can really do some fine tuning uh, when you have time. And you don't have to watch me fiddle with it all day. All right. So I'm going to go like this. Eh, maybe that's a good. And then go down here. That's good. Now, uh, if I go like this, no, I can't do that because I don't want the floor to go over top of the pool. Do I? No. All right, so it does get a little tricky. Ah. Well, I don't know if I want the floor to go to that edge like that. I don't. So I'm going to push escape again. Push delete that delete that. If you select it, you can delete. And you know what? Actually, I want to delete this too. Okay, that works. Uh, boundary line. Ah, if I select boundary line, maybe it will just let me click it. No. Okay, come on, push escape. Go here, get that purple square. The purple square again. The purple square again. The purple square again. And then I'm going to drag this purple square over here, and hopefully it knows what I want. Oh, uh, hopefully it knows. Let's see. If we click the check mark, let's see what happens. Hey, oh, it worked. All right. Oh, but I don't want a generic floor. Ew. Um, let me do. Hey. I thought I had like tile. Where's my tile floor? Oh, that, um, that's better. All right, there we go. All right, and let's go over here. Let's zoom in a little bit. See what we got going, going on. See how those floors mat meet each other. Hey, oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Don't you? And then you could put in paths, and I'm sure you could put like dirt as a floor. You might have to download it from Revit City. All right, let's change this this sucker over here to realistic, and see what happens. Ooh, that's like an empty pool. But look at that. That's so nice. 
You know what? In fact, that's so nice. I think I'm going to get uh, floor. I'm just going to use floor to make it look a little nicer. Uh, I'm going to do a rectangle, and then I'll just use the, yeah, I'll use the generic floor. I'm going to go like this. Do, do, do. Oh, come on now. I'll go like, no, actually. Come on. It's not going to like that because they overlap here. Come on now. Yeah, that should just do what I was planning on doing. All right, I'm going to go like, bam. All right, and then I'm going to hit the check mark, and then I'll do another one here in a second. I'll go to escape, hit floor again. Get my rectangle tool here. I'm going to go like this, push check mark, bam, push escape, again, get my rectangle to, where's my rectangle to, where's, oh, click floor again, come on, and my rectangle tool, right here, and then how about to like right there, they probably won't like it because it's going to overlap because we made that mistake earlier, and I say we, like, like you did it too, hmm, I don't like that. I don't like how it's overlapped there. I wonder if we can fix that. Uh, hmm. Maybe edit boundary? Ooh, that could work. Maybe if I... Hey, what is that doing? Look at that. I bet I can get rid of this little boundary guy. Select that guy. Click that little dot, bring it up. Hey! Man, it's almost like I teach this. All right, pretty good. Here, come on. No! See, pride goes before the fall. I was getting all cocky, and now it's not working. But I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to drag that little dot to go there. I'm going to click here. Drag this little dot to go there. All right, I'm going to go over here. Ugh, come on, Johnston. I'm going to zoom out or else it's going to take an hour. There we go. All right, click here, click the little dot, move it up there, click here, and the little dot up here, and then click the check mark. Did I fix it? Fixed it. Nice. Ah, I lost my house. Oh, sometimes this happens. Shoot. Okay, well, anyway, I got my nice house over here. Look at this. Sweet. Look at that. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. It's not a house. It's a shed. That's too small to be a house. You know what, though? We do need one more thing before I sign off. Uh, it's kind of my signature thing is... No, don't save. No, stop it. No, grab it. Okay. No, I don't want to do a pool. I want to go and... I want to put in something that's kind of funny. I think when you go to Entourage and you see this van, I think that looks like a creepy stalker van. So I'm going to click OK. Hey, okay. okay. I'm going to put the creepy stalker van like right here. He's like right around the corner. He's like watching you swim in the pool in the creepy stalker van. So like you're in the pool and you can't really see him, right? And you're like swimming in the pool and he's right there looking at you. Creepy, creepy, creepy stalker the one guy. All right, one last thing. Uh, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna just gonna see if my computer will do it. I'm gonna click down here and I'm gonna click Ray Trace. You might have seen that. If you click on that, it is going to take a buttload of time sometimes to make it look as realistic as possible. So I'm going to click Ray Trace. And let's see what happens. Um, hmm. Little spinning wheel. But yeah, while we're waiting for that. Oh, wow. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Well, it's still resolving the image. Let's review what we did. We figured out how to uh, place walls 
uh, we figured out how to make sure that our elevation levels were correct. Uh, we figured out how to um, make sure that the, um, the, the walls are placed a certain size uh, and then adjust them later. We figured out how to put in windows and how to put in doors. Uh, we figured out how to uh, put a floor in uh, and put some components in, like some shelves. Uh, we figured out how to place a roof and to make sure that that roof is on top of the right level. Um, we also figured out how to go to Revit City and download a file, uh, in this case a pool. Ooh, look at that crystal clear, beautiful water. And I might be mistaken, but I'm wondering if it's even generating the reflection of the trees over there. It might be. Hmm. Uh, and so then we also figured out how to bound uh, the pool with a floor, um, using that uh, like a tile floor or something, um, where you can have rectangles that go all the way around, but not in the middle. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. We learned a little bit about the views, a little bit about how to um, navigate around uh, Revit, and that's pretty much it. Look, at I just tried to zoom in. That's all I tried to do. <laughs> and it's got to like re, uh, you know, re-figure out all of those uh, little pictures and images again. Anyway, uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this video all the way through. Uh, if you could, um, no joking here, I know everybody laughs when I say it, but if you could subscribe to my channel and uh, like the video, and also if you can, make a comment. Um, I am trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I'm at like 628 right now. And if I get to 1,000, then YouTube lets me do some extra stuff that uh, should be kind of fun and cool to do. All right, well, thanks so much, and you guys have a great day, and good luck reveting.